Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship, and this week we're talking about patching your lights. Hey, 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 what do you say? Yes, it's that time again. It's Tech Tuesday. So last week we talked about um, the concept of DMX and uh, and lighting and how DMX is used to communicate with different lights. Um, this week I figured we'd put that into practice and we would um, show you um, a tutorial series that we're starting for uh, a program called Champsis Magic Q. And, uh, and we'll show you how to patch in these three lights that I've got set up precariously behind me. Um, so if you're not familiar with Champsis, uh, one is actually pronounced Campsis. It's a uh, product of the UK, um, but most everybody I know in America calls it Champsis, so it's incorrect, but that's what we're going to call it. Um, but Magic Q, which is the program that's created by Champsis, um, is a really cool um, free-to-start lighting program. Um, it's free to start because uh, uh, you can use any dongle. It's great if you use theirs, which is only 100 bucks. but you can use any dongle um, and get it to give you one universe or one set of 1 to 512 um, DMX channels to start with. And, um, and then like a lot of really cool functions as far as how it works and effects and that kind of stuff. And um, most small to mid-sized churches will actually do really well with just the free version of Magic Q. Um, and then, of course, once you upgrade, if you want to get some of their control surfaces, then you can get more universes and you can do more control and you got physical faders to work with and all that kind of stuff. So it's a cool program. However, like most lighting programs, it's not incredibly user-friendly to start with, um, especially if you're new to lighting and the concepts of lighting. Um, you might find it a bit intimidating um, and not – ironically for lighting, which is a beautiful thing, um, most lighting programs are not very attractive looking themselves. And, uh, and it's easy to get lost and they're very PC-based and not knocking PCs, but they're just – it's just not the easiest thing to get around. So we're going to do some tutorials to kind of help you get going. And again, this week we're going to start by talking about uh, patching. So I've got three different Chauvet brand lights behind me that are very affordable and useful for churches. And um, we're going to just patch all these lights in this week and just show you um, a couple different ways to do that. So I've got a um, Magic Q session open here. Um, this is something I was working on earlier today. So um, we're going to start out fresh. So if you are using Magic Q for the first time, um, you will see what it's like from scratch. So I'm going to go up here to File, New. It's asking me if I want to save this. I don't. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. It's asking me if it's okay um, that it, erases it, which it is. So I'm going to hit yes. And then it's going to ask me uh, what kind of show I want to do. I'm going to just do normal here. And right now we don't see it, but everything has changed. Uh, in this program, if you ever get lost and it's easy to get lost in here, um, the best thing, at least when you're starting, is to go to layout one over here. And that's going to just kind of take you to the top session um, where you've got where all your palettes will end up being. And palettes are what you use to control your different lighting fixtures. So we can see everything's empty right now because we have a new session. So we're gonna be doing patching. So over here near where we had layout is a button that says patch. So we're gonna click on that. And um, I was messing around with this earlier. Usually when you click on patch for the first time, it's gonna look like this. Uh, if Again, if you get lost, um, but you know you're in the right menu, a lot of times you just need to click on the top left-hand um, button to be where it kind of defaults to. So we are in the patch window. We're looking at the view heads section of that window. Once we have lights in here, we will see them listed in order um, by head, so by each individual fixture. Uh, another thing we're going to be doing today is looking at the channels. So if you click on view channels, it's going to be the same thing, um, but instead of showing um, each uh, head individually, you're gonna see each channel individually. Um, so that's another um, another way you can kind of visually see what's going on with uh, with your DMX chain. 
So for now, we're going to start in view heads. And uh, we need to tell the program what light we're going to program in. And uh, Magic Q comes with, uh, they update it constantly. It comes with a lot of lights already programmed in. Um, so the odds are good that you're going to find the one that you're trying to use. So we're going to click on choose head up here in this. Again, we're in the patch window. And then we're going to start typing in the name of the brand, which in this case is Chauvet. So you can see as I type in the word Chauvet, it will kind of hone in on where it should be. You can see down here what you're typing in in case you misspell anything. This program is not very forgiving. If you spell Chauvet wrong, it will have a hard time finding it. So just be aware of that. And then you can either click on it or you can hit the enter key. And now we've got a whole bunch of Chauvet fixtures that we can look for. Um, so let's type in the first one, which is a uh, slim par try 12. And here it is. Once you click on that, now it gives you an option for what kind of mode or personality that light is going to be. Talked about that last week. Um, this particular light has um, a three channel mode and a seven channel mode. Seven channel mode is going to give you the most functionality. Um, and since we only have three lights to patch in, we'll go ahead and do that. Now, that means you also have to tell the light itself, like we did last week, you have to tell it to be in seven channel mode so that it knows what it's looking for that's going to be coming from the program. You always got to make sure those two things are matched up or you could run into some issues in the future. So now, um, even though you can't really tell, um, that that head is ready to go in Champsis. Um, so now you just need to tell it where to go. And to do that, first way we're going to do that is by clicking on this button up here that says patch it. Pretty straightforward. When you click on that, and again, we're in the patch window, I'm clicking on the patch it button. It's going to give you a little um, dialog box where you can type in um, three th types of information you need. The number of heads, which in this case is one. So one head, the at symbol to the number of, or sorry, the number of the universe, which in this case we're using the free version of Magic Q. It's always going to be universe one. It's not until you get the paid versions that you have multiple universes you can work with. That's fine. So it'd be one head at universe one hyphen the channel start. Um, so in this case, we're going to start it on channel one. So it's going to be one. So one head at Universe one hyphen channel one. And we'll hit enter. This is the first light we're programming in, so it's asking if we want it in the visualizer. We'll talk more about the visualizer later, but we'll just go ahead and hit yes, that's fine. And there we have it. You can see on here our um, our head type. So what we clicked on, the brand, the model, the channel that it starts on, which is channel one, the head number, which is what's assigned by Magic Q. Uh, and then a name that you can change later on, um, and then the rest of the information you don't really need at this time. And, uh, and that's it. So you're good. That light is actually in there now. We'll test it in a moment to prove that. Um, as I talked about earlier, there's also the view channels mode. So if you do that, you can see we've got that same information, but it's expanded out to where it shows not just that one line of information, but also every channel that's attributed to that light and um, what it does. So red, green, blue, color macro, shutter speed, control, and then the master dimmer for the whole thing. So really good information on there. And the nice thing about this mode is that I can easily see where the next open channel is going to be. Um, so when I go to patch in the next light, there are two different ways I could do it. I could either be in view heads mode, and I could do patch it, and then I could put, you know, Let's say I had another one of these lights. I could do one at, so one head at universe one on channel eight. And I could do that. Um, or what's a little bit easier is in view channel mode, I can just click on the number eight. And then when I hit patch it, it would automatically put that light there. So that's a good fast way. If you don't already know uh, where it is, you're not trying to go back and forth between a lot of menus. Um, that's a pretty quick way to go, especially if you're doing one light at a time. If you're doing multiple lights, it'd be easier for you to do the other window because then you can just say, I want 10 of these lights starting on channel one, and it'll just automatically populate it for you. So really easy. So for today, um, I've got uh, 
one of each light. So I'm going to just do it in the view channel uh, view. Excuse me. So uh, let's go ahead and patch in the next light. So to do that, first I need to choose a different head. So choose head. Again, this is a Chauvet light. We're going to do this one on the bottom here. This is a, um, it's an older model, but it's a VW, um, which is a variable white light, which is pretty cool. So that's a Slim Par Pro VW. Here it is. And we'll be running it in its top channel mode, which is seven channels. And again, that light has been selected for that as well. So now it's ready to patch. I've got channel eight selected. I'm going to click on patch it. And boom, we're done. It's in there and it's ready to go. Let's go ahead and do our final light. Choose head. Again, Chauvet. This one's a color rail. Right there. Enter. We're going to do 26 channel mode. And we're going to patch it. This one is a multi-element head. Um, we'll talk more about that later, but that means that it's going to show up as one light but it also will show up as eight lights. So you can control um, the light as its entire light it is, <laughs> or you can break it into eight sections and say, okay, I want that part to be red and that part to be blue and that part to be green. You can do some pretty cool things with that. We're gonna go ahead and hit yes, and we're done. So now we've got all of our lights programmed in um, and we can go ahead and test them. So I'm gonna click on layout one. Again, layout one is your kind of home base to to get you back to where you can kind of see a global view of everything going on. And you can see now where these were blank, now we have automatically made groups um, for each light. And we have some generic color um, palettes that are made for us. Um, so let's go ahead and test each one really quickly and then we'll be done for today. So I'm gonna click on the Tri-12, that's the top light behind me um, that is a uh, wash light, so it does different colors. Uh, we've got it selected. I've got my Grandmaster fader over here turned down a bit so it doesn't blind the camera too much. Um, and now I'm going to turn up my selected head intensity, this bottom right-hand control here, and that'll turn up the selected lights, which is just that one. And there you have it. That light's working. So good. Let's move on. The VW. That's the bottom light behind me. Again, that's a variable white light. Intensity up. And we got it. Okay. And then the color rail. If you notice as I turn this one up, we're not getting anything. That's just whoever made this patch um, told it to when you very first start to default to the color black, which is none of the colors working. So with my intensity down, I'm just going to click on white. Now I go to turn my intensity up to test it again. You notice it's not there. Um, that's because now we're seeing all the attributes for um, colors for that light. And um, the intensity setting that we're looking for is actually a group setting. So if I click on this, this group panel here, you can see we got that setting back. Now let's try it again. And you can see that entire color rail is working. And that's it. Um, so we'll be talking in the very near future. We'll still be doing audio videos, um, but we will be talking more about lighting probably every other week, every couple of weeks. Um, or if you guys make requests for it, we can do it more often. It really depends on what's going to work best for you guys. So uh, again, this uh, show is fueled off of your comments and your questions and what we see as being uh, interesting things for local churches that might need help. Um, so you can make suggestions and send questions either on our comment section or you can email me directly at techtuesday at ascensionworship.com. And uh, I'm a few uh, emails behind right now, so if you send them to me, I do have them and I am trying to get to them as soon as possible. Um, but I do definitely read those and they do affect um, some of the shows that are coming up. Um, so please feel free to keep in contact on that. And uh, we hope this has been helpful for you. Until next week, have a great day. Again, this is Chad from Ascension Worship. I hope this has been helpful for you and your team. Come back here every Tuesday for new information.